Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome everybody to the Heal Your Hunger Show. So happy to have you here. It is a great day to be alive and I'm super excited about my guest who's a really good friend of mine and such an inspiration and you're going to love her. You're going to love her. You're going to love what we talk about. Before I get into that, if you're at the Heal Your Hunger Show for the first time, welcome. I'm thrilled that you're here. Heal Your Hunger is about healing your deeper hunger because guess what? (laughs) If you struggle with food and weight, it's not really food you're hungry for. Let's be clear. We have a deeper hunger and we actually talk about that on this episode, but we do. We have a deeper hunger, but we fill it with food and then food doesn't satisfy us. And then we keep eating. So here at the Heal Your Hunger Show, we talk about what that hunger is. And we talk about life stuff, emotions, you know, habits of being like people pleasing and not using our voice and things that are the real nuts and bolts of why we're turning to food. Because if you just slap a diet on it, chances are you're not going to be able to follow the diet. So we talk about how to truly heal at the deeper level, much like functional medicine, where we're looking at root causes as we talk about on this episode. And I want to say, if you haven't signed up for the quit sugar challenge, that is coming right around the corner. It's a five day power packed challenge where I'm offering my live mindset calls to help you change your relationship with sugar and the mindset around that. Because when people are confronted with the opportunity to to quit sugar, they're like, "Ah, it's my best friend. How do I actually do that? So we get into the mindset of quitting sugar and then the mechanics of quitting sugar. So you can literally clear it out of your diet. So you know what the 80 plus names for sugar are. So you can sleuth them out of your healthy foods, yes, healthy foods, end up having sugar snuck into them by the the sneaky manufacturers. So join us for the Quit Sugar Challenge. It's super inexpensive. Go to quitsugarchallenge.com and sign up, clear your calendar, and let's go on this journey together so you can feel better, have more energy, lose those stubborn pounds, and just be your absolute best so you can serve the world, right? That's what we're here for. And also, if you haven't taken the quiz to find out if you're an emotional eater or a food addict, you can do that on my website, healyourhunger.com. So go to healyourhunger.com and click the button, take the quick uh, three-minute quiz and find out your personalized score of where you are on the emotional eating spectrum. So, so important to know next steps to take to heal your relationship with food. So I want to tell you about my guest, Dr. Sandra Scheinbaum trains people to become functional medicine health coaches, and she helps practitioners and businesses hire them because she believes that health coaches are the key to combating chronic disease and reducing healthcare costs. She's founder and CEO of the Functional Medicine Coaching Academy, which is a collaboration with the Institute for Functional Medicine, and she is a leader in the field of health coaching education. She's also, you know, in her senior years, and she started this company at age 65, so she is a powerhouse, and absolute, absolutely, she's petite, but boy, she's got a, a big message and she carries it courageously. And so you're absolutely going to love her in this conversation. So let's jump in. Sandra, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for coming on the show. It's so great to be here, Trisha. <laughs> yeah, it's great to see you. And for a little background for those who are listening. So Sandy and I go way back and we went to many business trainings, health and business trainings. And Since we're both kind of former emotional eaters, the trainings we would go to specifically, they would bring out healthy snacks at every single break at this conference. And they were health, like quote healthy, but they were like health bars that you could overeat on. And so we decided to be bar buddies and keep ourselves accountable to not snack during the breaks because you can pack on pounds <laughs> and like those, it's almost the healthy foods that are more dangerous. Cause like, you know, not to eat a Twix bar or a Snickers bar, like that's crappy food, right? But when it's a health bar and it's sweetened with stevia or whatever, it's almost more slippery. So anyway, that was really important for me that we were accountability buddies on that. 
And it worked because I would go up to the snack table and wait a minute, Trisha's got, I made a pledge to <laughs> Trisha that I'm not going to eat these. And these, I, for me, anything that comes in a wrapper that <laughs> looks like a candy bar, it, it's all over. I could eat 10, right, no problem. Exactly. And these taste, there was one particular that tasted like a Mounds bar or an yes, almond Oh my gosh. Was, oh, <laughs> so, so dangerous. Had to avoid it. <laughs> yeah. And, and the emotional eater thing is like, but it's healthy, right? right. <laughs> and then it's like 10 bars later. So that was really important. And I love that about us and our relationship <laughs> that we're able to support each other. Not, and not only that way, other ways as well, but that was a big way for us. Yes, for sure. Um, yeah. So I love the mission that you're on, Sandy, and what you've been doing for many years now to help really build consciousness, awareness, and participation in health coaching for so many people to get certified and then to work in, you know, functional medicine practices. Can we really unpack, first of all, before we get into your company, and what it does, can we talk about functional medicine and what that is for those who don't know? Sure. So functional medicine is really, as Dr. Mark Hyman says, who's one of the leaders in functional medicine, it's about helping people function better. How do we do that? Well, there are basic principles, and it has to do with finding the root causes of what's driving your medical condition or your symptoms. So there's a story that I like to tell that I hope brings this to light. So imagine that there's a room, let's say it's a kitchen and there's water on the floor. It's a big flood and there's a bunch of people, they have mops and they're trying to mop up all the water from the floor. But what they're not doing, so they're looking down at the floor, but they are not looking up at the sink. The faucets are on full force. The faucets are now causing the sink to fill with water and it is overflowing and it's on the floor. That's why there's a flood. The answer is simple. Go just turn off the faucet. You'll stop this flood. But this is an example of what conventional medicine is, where they're trying to mop up the symptoms. They're trying to say what treatment, what medication is for these symptoms, the symptoms in this case being the water on the floor, but not turning off the source. The source is typically something like inflammation, chronic systemic inflammation. Functional medicine gets to that root cause. And then what do they do? Well, it's personalized. It's not one size fits all. And it is tied to changing lifestyle factors like what you're eating and how much sleep you're getting. And if you're exercising during the day, your relationships, your stress. And so that's where the health coaches come in because the functional medicine doctors are the ones who are defining what that root cause is. And then they turn it over to the health coach to help people make the kind of changes that are going to impact these root causes. And the cool thing is that it's not just someone's theory, but it is based on evidence. There's a lot of good research that is available. And so when we look at functional medicine principles, we know that they come from research. And again, it's personalized and it is looking at root causes. I love that. Instead of slapping a Band-Aid on it, so, so important. And I think probably a lot of people listening are health conscious and may have even had, you know, mystery symptoms, something that they couldn't get to the bottom of and have turned to functional medicine. So it's so cool to, to hear about it, but also to understand that there are functional medicine coaches, you know, and so that you when you founded your company, you married it, right? It was a be beautiful marriage between mm -hmm. Mark Hyman's uh, uh, company and yours. Can you talk about that? Sure. So we are a collaboration with the Institute for Functional Medicine. Mark Hyman was, was, uh, is very heavily involved in that. Dr. Jeffrey Bland is called the father of functional medicine, founded IFM uh, with several others, Dr. David Jones, and they train doctors. Many doctors, are burnt out with a conventional system. They work for hospitals and they know that this isn't why they went to medical school. They want to really help people get better and serve people. And so they're flocking to functional medicine. And as our collaboration, what we do is we train people from all walks of life to become health coaches 
they are not taking over for the doctors. They're not practicing medicine, but they're helping people understand and follow the functional medicine principles. So what will often happen is a doctor who's practicing functional medicine will come up with a whole list of recommendations but it's hard to change. If you've been you doing something for a while, it's hard to change your life, just like it was hard for us to avoid those healthy bars that were at those conferences. It's hard when people are told you need to give up gluten and dairy, you need to go on an elimination diet, come up with an exercise plan, or maybe you've been over-exercising and you need to cut back. That could be equally as hard and daunting. So the coach is somebody who takes you from where you are to where you want to be. They are your ally, your buddy. They are just like you were my buddy for that. And I thought about you. I heard yeah. your voice. And, <laughs> I, and that's what people say when they work with coaches. Oh, wait, I, I told my coach I would get out and walk today. So I know I'm going to have to be, I'm going to be meeting uh, with them in a day or so. And I want to be able to say I followed through. And so that accountability is really a big piece of why coaching is successful, as well as providing information. We have coaches who are out there in the community giving workshops. They are on podcasts. They are making a real difference because we have such a problem with chronic disease. It's on the rise. And like we're seeing issues with mental health like never before, anxiety, depression. We have a, a shortage of mental health providers. Health coaches, and there's this is again based on research, can really help people. They don't do psychotherapy, but they are helping people in the here and now you merging the benefit of lifestyle, which can trigger depression, for example, and help them integrate a better way of living their lives and using their basic strengths. It's based on positive psychology. And the cool thing about health coaching, I just want to say this, is that it's so accessible. It's not like you have to go back and get a degree in nutrition and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, it is not like you need a background in healthcare. We have some of the best graduates are just people who had no background. Maybe they were, we have one who corporate banking uh, during the pandemic. She says, I'm just burnt out. She became a health coach. We have others who come from marketing, advertising, uh, farmers. We have people who have been in construction. We have stay-at-home moms. Uh, we have so many people who want to serve and what they need is to be a good listener. That's what makes a health coach. I love that. And I think there, you know, we've many uh, women who are perhaps uh, at the ending of their traditional career right now. And this might be of interest, right, as an as a next chapter in their life. Speaking of which, you know, uh, you 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 got into this as a next chapter of your own life when at age 65. Can you talk about that? Because I do have a lot of older women listening, and I think that would be an inspirational story for them. Yeah. So I started out many, many years ago. We're talking early 70s as a teacher, specifically in special education. And then I went on and became a clinical psychologist. I focused on health, and I did that for many many years. When I was 65, I was uh, in this little office. It was part of a wellness center. And I was in the northern suburbs of Chicago and really decided that at a time when so many of my contemporaries were retiring and I felt like I wanted to have, build something. I had a big mission because I had taught for many years principles of positive psychology, psychology of well-being, mind-body medicine, and saw how effective this was uh, when we integrated all these approaches. And I had just come out of training in functional medicine through the Institute for Functional Medicine. So I thought I could put all those together and uh, teach people. And so I felt energized by it. And, and what we're finding in terms of longevity when you have a mission and a purpose, and when you are going to learn new things and try new things, have that curiosity. So rather than being stuck in the same pattern, but you do some things that's, that are new, you learn new things or 
starting new careers. That is one of the keys to thriving uh, as you're getting older to prevent things like cognitive decline or just feeling like, you know, your your life is, uh, and for me, I like to say, I never liked to play cards. And so many of my friends are doing that now. You know, their day consists of playing canasta or mahjong or um, and and playing pickleball, and those are great things. But I felt like I really wanted to to serve and feel energized by what I do in terms of my work. And I and also like to be around it. young people. I love it. Do you ever do you tell people publicly your age? Oh, I'm 74. All yeah. right. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't want to say it for you, but um, I love that. And and I think that your story is so inspirational and so encouraging. And there are a lot of, I'm sure, middle-aged women who are getting into health coaching as their next chapter as well. We have people in their 80s. So there's a, a couple that stands out. They um, they both uh, are, were in retirement, former teachers, and they decided I'm, we're going to become health coaches. And uh, that is very, very common. Uh, and we are calling it uh, non-retirement retirement. And actually people who are younger, and they're not in that retirement age yet, but they're looking ahead uh, and they're thinking uh, one woman comes to mind. She's a nurse. She was in our first class, our beta class, and she had worked for many years at a hospital and she knew that she didn't want to do this much longer. But all, particularly uh, when she retired, she still wanted to be involved. And so she became a health coach. We actually have medical doctors who've done, done the same thing. So they're training to be a coach so that they can, at some point when they're ready, close their practice and function as a coach. I love that. That's beautiful. And, I, and I'm total agreement with you about that about the cognitive benefits, right. Of learning something new. I'm learning Spanish. So that's my yes. little, that's, that's the way I'm going to keep my brain young um, and elastic. <laughs> so, um, so that's really beautiful. And I love that you're carrying the torch for all these health coaches and that you are doing it along the lines of functional medicine, which is so, so important for people um, you have done a lot, both in your work as a psychologist and now with uh, your company um, around, you mentioned the gut, you mentioned anxiety. Can we talk about that? You know, the mental health crisis we have post COVID uh, of depression and anxiety and just what you're seeing along those lines. Sure. So it, it's a vicious cycle. Um, you mentioned the gut. There is a strong connection. We call the gut our second brain. We make our most of our neurotransmitters come from our gut. And so, you know, we, we intuitively know this. If we're nervous, you know, we feel like my, I, I, have, I have a gut feeling, I feel an instinct, I'm talking, listen to your gut. And with these conditions, first of all, I think we're very quick to label something a disorder. When you say or when somebody tells you you have depression, you have an anxiety disorder, and I've had experiences where people were told by their doctor, you're depressed or you have an anxiety disorder, and you're going to have to take this medication for the rest of your life. And now what happens is they are pigeonholed and they see themselves in this category, like I have this condition, uh, and it, the sense is I'm damaged, and somebody, or I need to be fixed. I need this medication to fix me, or I need uh, 10, 15 years of psychotherapy to fix me, and there's something wrong. And often we have experts reinforcing this uh, because, yes, trauma exists, and I don't want to deny the impact of early trauma in your life. Sure. When you are having this message, though, that you're you just need to keep reliving it, you need to keep talking about it, telling, you know, working on it in therapy or the sense that because of this trauma, I'm damaged and therefore this is the way I am now. Right. Another approach. Yeah, it becomes you. And what is remarkably effective, and I've seen this so many times is when you use a strengths approach. That means you focus on what's right with me, uh, as we like to say, what's strong with you, as opposed to what's wrong with you. I love and that. And you look at your ability to, uh, and some of it's cognitive, to have use things like perspective, uh, to exhibit bravery, to express gratitude, to have a sense of humor. There are all of these traits, their strengths, 
that are within everybody. And the field of positive psychology is the study of how we thrive. And often a big part of that is looking at what's called our character strengths. So if you have a goal, let's say I wanna change my eating patterns, well, you use your strengths uh, to be able to do that successfully. And so once you do that, uh, it's very powerful. What's even more powerful is if you add in lifestyle changes, because when somebody is experienced, if they're anxious, if they're depressed, I know I used to get really horrible panic attacks when I was in my 20s. Mm. But what was going on with me at the time? Well, I was binging on sugar. I'm like out of control eating. I was not exercising. And so right there, that was how sugar hijacks your brain. And it hijacks your executive functioning. So yes, I was out of control and having these outbursts and having panic attacks where I thought I was dying because of that link, as well as the link that I was scaring myself and actually believing I was dying. So a combination of cognitive approach where you focus on de-escalating, that it's not catastrophic, I can deal with it, it's not so bad, it's uncomfortable, it's not awful, horrible, terrible. Uh, and you use that in combination with making these lifestyle changes. So that's what coaches do. They help people see this integrative approach, that it's not just, I'll change my diet and everything will be fine, but I'll look at diet, I'll look at stress, I'll look at sleep, look at my relationships, as well as some movement throughout the day, as well as then utilizing my strengths to help me make these changes and make them last. I love that. Thank you for sharing that and explaining positive psychology. I love that. What's strong with me? <laughs> so good. <laughs> so good. Yeah. And as emotional eaters, you know, we tend to look at uh, what the negative, right? The glass is always half empty. And, and I, we do a lot of celebrating uh, my clients, you know, on our group calls, we have a just literally a whole celebration section where people celebrate not big deal wins, just like movement, right? We're moving the ball. We're just, yes. we're just making incremental changes. And we celebrate that because we're so used to just focusing on everything we're doing wrong. We want to celebrate what we're doing right. And no matter how big or small, so really, really important, right? Well, we focus on grows, so let's focus on the good, positive changes and they will grow. So, so beautiful. Well, I love talking about this stuff with you, Sandy. And I, again, I love the torch you're carrying for health and for helping people implement, you know, healthy changes through health coaching and your coaches are working in doctor's practices. So I love that doctors are like learning. This is how I can, I can ex extend my impact and help my patients is uh, with health coaching. So that is super, super cool that your health coaches are working in practices. Yes, we are committed to helping uh, grow this collaborative care model because health coaches are such an important part of the team. Yes. Well, you're making a big dent in the world of functional medicine and health. So thank you for that. How do people find out about your school if they're curious about becoming a health coach? They can go to our website. It's functionalmedicinecoaching.org. On Instagram, it's functional med coach. Same with there's uh, LinkedIn, Functional Medicine Coaching Academy, or Facebook as well. Okay. And we will put those links in the show notes also. So I think that's so important. Thank you for that. This being the Heal Your Hunger show, my final question for you, Sandy, is what is your deepest hunger? Yeah. So I, for community connection, mm. I thrive when I am with people in community, feeling like we belong. You know, you and I have been uh, belonging to a community of like-minded individuals and just getting together with people that you know that they support you, you support them. And I think it is so important. It's probably the number one thing that helps people thrive as they get older to not be isolated. Lo loneliness is a bigger risk factor than smoking or sitting. It is. It really is up there at the top. It is the power of community.
That's, amen. I, I would be hungry without it. Yes. Amen. It's so important. It's soul food, right? Community yes. is soul food. And it's not food we're really hungry for as emotional eaters. It's not health bars. It's for community and for connection, for support. That's yeah. right. And yeah, and that's why groups like the ones you run are so impactful uh, because yeah. people know that then they're not alone. There's yeah. other, other people. For the emotional eaters, you know, it's it, to me, overeating and food addiction is the hardest of all addictions to overcome because you have to eat. You know, you have to eat. You have to take your addiction out of the refrigerator three times a day and put it back in. And so it's really important that we do hard things in community and together with mutual support. So, so vital. So I love it. Thanks for being my friend, Sandy. And thanks for all your support. And thanks for carrying this important message and all for listening. Uh, Please tune in, uh, check out Sandy's website and the offerings that she has and let's heal together. So thanks, Sandy. Great to have you. Thank you. Great to be here. If you're ready to get off the dieting roller coaster ride and finally make peace with food and with your body, talk to a Heal Your Hunger mentor about what steps you need to take based on your own history with food and weight. Go to HealYourHunger.com and register for an emotional eating breakthrough session and see how fast you can experience real change. It's a complimentary evaluation, but there are limited spots available. So go to HealYourHunger.com and register to speak with a mentor today.